Hello everyone and welcome back to Dragalia Foundry, a fan channel where everything Dragalia Lust can be found. Today's video is another look at the Persona collab with Dragalia Lust, Cage Desire. Our raid event got its final big drop of content today outside of the epilogue. So today, the Omega difficulties of the raid became available, and that's mainly what I'm going to check out in this video. I'm showing off my Omega 3 solo right now, and then we'll switch over to my Omega 3 raid clear after this. There's also an Omega level 1 and Omega level 2, so depending on your level of progression in the game, hopefully at least one of those is something that you're able to complete. Besides the Omega content, we also have new difficulties for the Trials. So Sophie and Joker's Trial now have a Master difficulty available. Good rewards for clearing it once. They've also sprinkled in rewards to the Daily Endeavors for getting those Trials done. And you get some Twinkling Grains for that. So it's a nice way to keep looking at those and keep the player base steadily engaged in them. So I thought that that was pretty cool. The trials on Master Difficulty for Sophie and Joker, they may not last very long, but they do do some pretty splashy moves, and even though I already made a video about the trials for Expert Difficulty, I was pretty pleased to check those out again and actually play through them. And of course, the other big thing that happened today is that the showcase has switched, now we're on the Part 2 showcase for the event, the one that features Panther. Our Sand is still featured just like before, but now instead of Joker and Morn Morgana or Mona, uh, Panther is featured. So one thing that is a big surprise on the showcase to a lot of players out there, myself included, is that you can still spark for Joker and uh, Morgana on this showcase if you want to. They're not on a raid up, so it's very unlikely you'll summon them you know, along the way as you're trying to get Panther. You may get lucky, and I have seen players get lucky and get them. But they're eligible for sparking, so I think that this is on net a positive, but I really wish we would have known about this beforehand. It certainly would have changed my summoning decisions, because I got Mona pretty early and then spent a lot of extra summons getting Joker. I could have put those toward Panther's banner instead, and sparked on her banner, hopefully picking up Panther along the way and then going for Joker at the very end. So yeah, I am a little disappointed to see that that wasn't as clearly communicated as I would have hoped. I find that players are already confused by the whole part one and part two thing as far as how worm sigils work. So this extra layer of the fact that uh, some of the characters for part one are sigil eligible on part two, but they're not on a raid up. It just seems like kind of an encumbrance. So I understand there are those out there who say, you know, we should have known this or we shouldn't have assumed anything on this. But it is a little unprecedented to get brand new characters, especially limited ones, show up like this to be sparkable on the Part 2 showcase that they're not even featured on. It's welcome, it doesn't hurt anybody technically, but the lack of information definitely hurt us. Hopefully there are some players out there at this point, you know, if they're just starting the collab, maybe this will give them a way they haven't logged in yet to actually take advantage of the situation, but uh, that was a little bit disappointing to see. The whole Part 1, Part 2 thing has made summoning very difficult, and even though there was a free Taily Tenfold today, I have not gotten Panther yet, so I'll keep you tuned on that. I might post a Panther summoning video in the near future here. Gonna wait a couple days, there are still some login bonuses available for the collab, and the last day of the login bonuses gives you a Tenfold summon uh, voucher, so I want to make sure I get that and give myself the best chance to get Panther that I can. Panther does look like a really sweet character, definitely looks quite a bit better than I would have expected, but I do still think that uh, she's less necessary, at least for me at this stage, since my flame team's pretty well set up. Anyway, to get to what's actually on screen, you can see here that uh, this was a pretty difficult Omega-3 solo. I have heard a lot of players express some challenges with this, and after trying it out several times and trying to use various budget teams, I have to admit, I do think this is considerably harder than past Omega-3 solos we've had like Mercedes Omega-3 during the second anniversary. I'm going to show off my team here. This is as budget as I was able to get with this, but still not that budget by any means. So I do think at the Omega-3 level, you are going to need a significant level of investment. I wasn't able to pull it off with all Chimera Tech weapons. I really had to dip into the Agito for power here. But here is my team. I have Audric in my lead slot. His weapon, as you can see, is very well upgraded. Not fully, but very well upgraded. Dragon, Arsene, only one unbind. And then I tried to use the Welfare print for the event, but also some more powerful prints that are focused on Dragon Transformation. 
but I tried to use ones that you might want to buy for your collection eventually anyway. So he is a dragon transformation centric character, and he is free in the event compendium. The other character that I think all players want to use if you're doing this on a budget is definitely Sophie. So I've geared her out here with uh, some weaker 4 star prints, stronger 5 star prints, including the free print from the event. And then I also have Mordecai, also available in the event compendium. And he and Cleo on my team here have these free mini dragons from the Fafnir Exchange, as well as Chimera Tech weapons, so they're geared out not quite as well. And again, very simple prints, you know, some 3 star worm prints in the 4 and 3 star slot, 2 star prints even. Same thing with Cleo, not super geared, but she is kind of important here to my overall setup because of her Dragon's Claws Chain Co ability. That definitely helps out Audric, and the fact that I'm able to use Arsene on a Shadow DPS lets me attack the Curse Gauge and not just the Bless Gauge via Sophie. That was ultimately about as cheap as I could go with my setup, and once you do get to the raid variant where I'm showing off now, there I think there's a lot more room for you to get carried. Now you'll notice that uh, my iPad's not holding up quite like it used to. Things definitely slow down a lot in this raid. Obviously a lot is happening on screen, but I was kind of surprised to see this. regalia has been pushing it a lot lately with their raid events as far as uh, how much is happening. I wanted to make this video in part to check out uh, Joker since I was able to summon him. Didn't include Mona for now because I felt like this team, Mona didn't really fit particularly well. But I do think having Persona characters is going to help you a lot in the raid because you're going to diminish the weakness gauges below the boss's down gauge and HP gauge. You get that weak effect and then the boss is staggered. That happened obviously a lot in my solo clear as well because of Arsene being on Audric as well as Sophie having the blessed Persona element, so two opportunities to cause weakness on the boss. If you don't have any of the Persona characters, it's still very clearable for solo, but you have to be very well invested. I was able to clear it, but my whole team needed Agito weapons and legit dragons, so there are probably some other chi strategies you can use for this, like with Mim, perhaps via Ramiel, uh, and maybe even things like uh, Karina, Gaun and Krenna for skill charge zones. Wow, some real slowdown right there. But uh, I found that if you just stick with Sophie and the light team, that's also not a bad approach because of her light damage co-ability. In my solo team, I was using her co-ability to power up Mordecai, and then Mordecai gives strength to my entire team as his co-ability. Those characters, of course, Mordecai and Audric in the event compendium if you're looking for them, but they are strictly free to play, and I was trying to use as budget dragons as possible. Here in this clear, I'm just using my full force team, so obviously it's going faster. In general, for raid events, characters that can provide buff zones like Gala Cleo or Gala Yurin are really solid overall. Grace is really nice for defense because normal types of healing have diminished capacity in a raid context, so her life shields are actually particularly effective, and in general, you can't afford that much healing or defensiveness in your team comps. I think in the raid it's easier, but um, it is something to keep in mind. Like, if you're struggling with DPS in the solo, for example, you might have to try to do it without a healer and try run somebody like Templar Hope who provides both buffs and healing instead, or maybe Mona from the healing from the Persona transformation. But yeah, this was a pretty tight battle. I, I do think that this is a, a fairly significant challenge. Certainly designed to incentivize you to go for Persona characters, since they will help you, but what I found was even when I used all my Persona characters in solo and used Chimera Tech weapons, it still wasn't good enough. So I do think you kind of need some Agito weapons or High Dragon weapons to actually make it through this on the hardest difficulty. For lower difficulties, you could probably use a greater variety of things, of course. We're about to beat the boss here, and uh, I think, yeah, that's it. Marking shot. The co-op variant of Omega-3 down. So all that is left for the event at this point is the epilogue and of course my Panther summoning session whenever that happens. I hope you've enjoyed the Persona collab with Dragalia Lost. Let me know how Omega has gone for you in the comments below and especially if you have some tips for newer players or players who are struggling with the Omega difficulty that would definitely be appreciated. That is going to do it for today though everyone so thank you as always for watching, take care, and I'll see you next time.